This book has it all. Giant world-ending cataclysms, giant krakens, giant everything, and of course, my boy Aquaman saving the world. What's not to love? Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of Awaken Geekdom here on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the final key element to Dan Abnett's rebirth, uh, DC rebirth run, or DC run overall with the character of Aquaman. It started way back in the New 52, then it continued on to rebirth with a series of videos that I've already covered on. And then we've come to this little piece right here. It is Justice League and Aquaman drowned Earth, and uh, yeah, this this was uh, pretty interesting. This here we have the dust jacket. Here's the book without the dust jacket. I'll open this image up for you guys uh, right there. So what exactly is Drowned Earth? Basically, it's a simple crossover uh, between Scott Snyder's Justice League run and Abnett's Aquaman run. Now the story is very straightforward. The League is, you know, it starts with the Justice League book itself. They're investigating an occurrence within the North Pole, if I remember correctly, at the beginning with the story. And then it evolves into a full-blown, high-octane adventure in the Seven Seas with these characters that arrive on Earth uh, through motives that you learn in the book and the real nature of their appearance is the core essence of the book. Uh, they appear and they literally unleash all hell on Earth. The Earth is drowned and people are getting turned into like these giant sea monsters and it's a race against time to find a cure and to defeat the bad guys. It's that sort of event. However, in my most sincere opinion, I really enjoyed this story, but I do think that this is like seven or eight issues, I think, but it felt so long and it could have been shortened down. It There was so much fat that you could have trimmed from this simply because certain issues explain something. There are two one-shots, I, I think. Um, like the actual issues are called Justice League Aquaman Drowned Earth and Aquaman Justice League Drowned Earth. Uh, it's a little confusing, don't worry about it. Uh, basically, you know, all, all, of, all of these uh, issues, they explain certain things that happen in the story, and then when you start reading the other one, in the case of um, transitioning from the one-shot to, say, uh, Aquaman issue 40-something, the scene gets replayed from that perspective, the exact same thing. You're not adding anything different. And that really annoyed me. I think it was like four separate occasions where I read the same thing. I'm like, wait, what? It's not from a different perspective, although the art changes, but it's basically the exact same thing. Plus, there is a Abnett Titans issue thrown in there, which uh, kind of shows you what other heroes are doing in this crisis. It, 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 it really did not need to be there, in my honest opinion. As I kept reading the story, I kept wondering, how is the Titan stuff going to relate to the ending of this adventure? I, I, don't, I don't really know, except some drama. Because, yeah, Garth is in it, and I get it. You're getting things from his perspective, but... Again, it, it serves no purpose, except that it gives you a couple more scenes with your favorite uh, Titan characters. Yeah. Also, there are a lot of people involved in this book. There are a lot of people drawing this thing. And, and just on the creative uh, side alone, I'm going to name them off right here. You've got Scott Snyder, Dan Abnett, and James Tinney on the fourth writing this thing. And pencilers. Francis Matterpool, Lan Medina, Clayton Henry, Howard Porter, Fraser Irving, Bruno Redondo, and Scott Goletsky. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got eight other inkers, including Francis Matterpool, uh, Vicente, uh, Vicente Cifuentes, um, Howard Porter, all those guys. I'm not kidding, guys. All that to work on eight issues. 
I'm just saying. I, I really wanted it to be consistent all the way through. Especially, here's the dust jacket. When you see that wonderful, beautiful uh, Manipul artwork, I wanted that throughout the whole thing. No disrespect to anybody else, although I did really like what Fraser was doing in the issues. That was amazingly epic, in my opinion. But suddenly we're looking at Lan Medina's artwork, and then it switches over to uh, Frasier, which is totally different. And then it goes into Manipul, and then all of a sudden we get Howard Porter's distinct style. And to me, at least, it didn't mesh as well as I would have liked it to. Uh, artists, um, artists all have different styles, and I get it. And and there there can be like this cohesiveness to it all, but. I don't know, I found it a little bit jarring. Still, each of them is wonderful in their own regard, but, you know, not exactly my cup of tea. The story itself is pretty standard. I sort of gave you the rundown of these bad guys coming in, but what does work really well, to me at least, is the world building that Abnet gets to do with Snyder and Tinion for one final go about and he's able to expand on a concept that I found super intriguing and that is the character of Arion. Longtime DC readers know about him. He has been around for many years and he is a character of DC lore, of course being one of the uh, founding fathers, if you will, of Atlantis. Arion is the, at the center of the story and he had a concept that is pretty beautiful in my opinion. Basically, you know, when Atlantis was at its peak, when it was still on land, he had this idea to reach out into the stars, into the vastness of space, because it is like the next step to the oceans. It is an ocean out there in space. Uh, and to reach out in good terms and good faith with power, wisdom, and um, you know, as an act of friendship. Uh, of course, things go south, as they usually do with these stories, but that concept stuck with me, and Abnet was able to expand on that and, gives a, and give us a little tease as to um, what his life was and, and sort of how Atlantis believed a certain version of the story and then uh, where we are uh, given a different uh, truth uh, with what happened and certain other characters that get involved. Now, I don't want to spoil the outcome, I don't want to spoil the story for you guys, but in essence, it is sort of like this one big final swashbuckling adventure to a run that Abnet started in the New 52. Pretty basic, pretty grounded, dealing, I remember dealing with the um, sea monsters, and then with the embassy, and then Aquaman sort of dealing with the government again, of course, then having to deal with the Civil War, and now with this. Um, but I do feel like it was, the event itself was a little bit too long, and I think Abnet could have, uh, I, I don't know who proposed the idea first, but I do think that Abnet could have tackled the story by himself on that book, because when you read it, it's obviously an Aquaman story, but the clashes with other characters and the different writing styles from Tinion, Snyder, and, and Abnet sort of left me a little bit jaded because some of the characters were very... I don't know, they were very cocky in the way that they were talking. And um, and then when you switch over to Abnet's book, they present themselves a little bit differently. It, they sort of had like that cliche Justice League vibe. I, I don't really, I can't quite put my finger on it at the moment. Uh, I do want to reread this uh, at a later time and enjoy it for what it is. It, it's a story at heart about what makes Arthur such an important member of the Justice League, of what makes him such an important hero, and that he is able to bridge worlds, in this case, via. In, in this case, whether it's interstellar or not, he still is able to be that link between the sea and land and friends and foes, and he is able to solve things pretty differently than other heroes and the importance of communication, of talking with people. Of course, when things go south and you gotta fight, hey, you're, you're, 
you're gonna have to fight and Aquaman is more than ready to kick some ass in my honest opinion uh, the art varies from issue to issue like I said earlier and that uh, I, I didn't quite a hundred percent liked it but for the most part everything was pretty solid yeah the story's a little bit cliched yeah the characters do act in predictable ways and you sort of see where everything is going the ending is pretty special because the ending uh, even though abnet was leaving it just perfectly lays um, the path for kelly sudaconic's run to begin which I will review eventually on this channel as well, so I'm really excited to talk about that as well. But it was just a perfect blend of a story finishing its course in a very action-packed and grandiose way. Aquaman doing what he needed to do to um, ensure that the world survives. And certain sacrifices were made. I won't say what, but if you read the story, then you know what I'm talking about. If you have not read and I should have mentioned this at the beginning, if you have not read Scott Snyder's Justice League book, you do not have to worry at all. Required reads, I would say you only need to check out, uh, well, you do need to read uh, Abnet's run, obviously, but uh, from the main DC line, you should be good with just knowing about DC Metal. It's a good way to end it, I think. Um, I, I, I would rank Abnet as mid-level to high, on my Aquaman scale because throughout his run I was constantly entertained he had great artists working on his book on this book and uh, just overall a great sense of adventure and amazing world building I cannot stress out that enough uh, of how uh, Abnon was able to take these concepts and expand them further and enrich the lore and history of Atlantis. I think it was very well done and I loved it and it's it's sad that we don't have cool deluxe hardcovers for his run but I'm happy with what we got. I'm happy that I was able to read it and enjoy it, love it, and all that fun stuff. Have you read Drowned Earth? Did you read uh, Abnet's Rebirth Aquaman run? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much as always for liking, commenting, subscribing, and just being an awesome person thank you for subscribing to a weekend geek them hit the notification bell just in case so whenever i do post videos you know uh, that they're ready to go guys as always follow me on your favorite social media platform i have got to go i'll catch all of you on our next adventure